personal experience with CRPS or RSD uh, has been a bit of a whirlwind. Um, I was treated for a sprained ankle um, in 2011. I was hiking um, this mountain in the Virgin Islands in, a, in an adventure camp and I fell down and I sprained my ankle. So I was treated for that by a doctor um, for six weeks and my pain continued to increase. And so the doctor said, well, your sprained ankle is, is over, it's healed, but I think now you have plantar fasciitis. So I was then treated for plantar fasciitis. I wore these ridiculous socks at night to try to stretch the fascia in my sleep. Um, I rolled my feet on water bottles. I did everything I was supposed to do for plantar fasciitis and it continued to get worse. Um, and the whole time the doctors are kind of looking at me like, wow, she, she must be crazy. There's no way that plantar fasciitis is hurting this much. Um, she's clearly dramatic and, um, trying to get attention. So, uh, that continued until I found another doctor, uh, uh, a podiatrist who also tried to treat the plantar fasciitis with steroids um, helped a little bit, but in the end, she ended up telling me, I think that you have RSD. It's very rare, but I think you do have it and you need to fly to the States immediately to get treated and, and actually see if you have this diagnosis. So within 24 hours, I was on a plane to Boston um, from Puerto Rico. Uh, in this doctor's office within 36 hours, and he said, yes, you do have RSD. Um, from there, he said, don't move, don't change your life, keep going, keep moving. Um, it's all about your attitude. So I went back with a determined attitude. I was in a wheelchair. I stood up. I learned to walk again. It's not as easy as it sounds. Um, and I continued to do that for four months and I got worse. Um, and I flew back to the States. I had another doctor, actually a, a team of doctors that told me, if you don't move back to the States and get treated for this, you, you're gonna lose the, func the function to walk ultimately. So um, I gave up everything that I'd built in the Caribbean, um, my private practice, my life there. I moved back to Virginia. I continued to get nerve blocks every single week. Um, for I think five or six weeks, um, continued physical therapy, got worse. Um, and then I was approved for ketamine treatment. I've had five inpatient ketamine infusions, which have helped immensely. Um, I went from sitting in a wheelchair, not being able to walk at all and crawling to the bathroom, crawling up and down the stairs, not being able to live alone. Um, to right now, um, I'm six months out of my last ketamine infusion. I'm walking 7,000 steps a day. I'm going to the gym five times a week. I'm moving through the pain every single day as much as it hurts because I don't want to lose that function. Um, again, and CRPS um, comes up quickly and days that you don't work out, weeks that you don't work out, you lose so much um, very quickly. And um, it's really, my life now revolves around that as much as I don't like it. Uh, it is part of my life. It's something that I have to be honest with other people and honest with myself in order uh, to manage. But it has, it has affected everything. And I, I can sit here and tell you, well, I'm a better person because of it. But I think I would have been fine without CRPS. <laughs> um, but trying to make the best of it is hard. And so those support groups, those Facebook groups, connecting on Instagram, finding blogs, uh, using sites like this, um, BrightBot is a, it's, you have to do it. You have to find people who understand what you're going through.